Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you all this morning. Welcome to chapel. Uh, I have a special message that I want to share with you today in the book of Psalm chapter 119. Psalms 119 will be our uh, our book that we're going to look at today. Psalms is in the Old Testament. It's probably the the, the easy, easiest book to find. All you got to do is pretty much just turn your, your Bible like this, just flip through the pages a little bit, and it's probably going to open right up to Psalms. We'll be in chapter 119, which is probably the, I believe it is the largest book of the Bible, and it's a really neat book. But we're going to talk about the Word of God today. We're going to talk about the Word of God. We talked about salvation. We talked about baptism. And now I want to talk to you about the Word of God. And, you know, you all stood up this morning and you pledged your allegiance to the Word of God. I don't know if you remember doing that, but you did. And you probably put your hand on your heart and you said, I pledge allegiance to the flag. And you pledged your allegiance to this country, which is a great thing. It's a good thing. And then you stood up and you said, you pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. And then after that, somebody in your class or maybe you uh, put your hand on your Bible and you said, I pledge allegiance to the Bible. And you said, it's God's holy word. And you said a couple other things. You said, uh, you're going to make it a, a, a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. You said you're going to hide its words in your heart so that you may not sin against God. Did you know that those words that you were saying, and you probably are saying every morning, actually come from the Bible? It's true. It comes from the Word of God. And I want to talk a little bit about those verses that you've been using every morning, and I want to show you just how important it is to read the Bible. I want to talk a little bit about the Word of God, and so maybe give us a better understanding of what it's all about. So, why am I in a cornfield? What, what a weird way to start out, right? Um, it is, but I hope you guys will follow along with me. I want to share you with you a story uh, from when I was probably about 10 or 11 years old, okay? When I was a little boy, um, my friends and I, we loved to go down to the local creek, the local stream, uh, which wasn't too far from my house. It was probably about a mile and a half or two miles away. And we would walk down to the local stream, one, because it was fun to get out of the house and get away from our parents for a little while, and two, because there were these little critters called crayfish. Now crayfish, they look like little miniature lobsters. These little miniature lobsters called crayfish were fun to catch, and they weren't easy to catch. They would bur burrow down into the mud, into the, into the water, and you had to kind of dig them out, and you would herd them into these little, uh, you know, we, we would make these little traps for them kind of thing, and we would pick them up and look at them, and then we would put them back in their homes. It was so much fun. It was just such a silly thing to do, but it was something to get you out of the house, and it was a good time, right? Well, I want to tell you a story about one day when we were walking to the creek, it was in the summertime, just like uh, it is now, okay? It was warm outside, and in order to get to the creek, we had to walk through a field, a farmer's field, just like the one I'm standing in today. And, you know, farmers plant their crops, and over time, their crops grow. And as you can see, I'm in a cornfield, and that's what I was walking through, a cornfield. And to get to the creek, you had to walk probably about a half a mile in a cornfield. Now, here's the thing. If you've ever been in a cornfield like I am right now, it's really easy to lose your bearings and get lost. It is. And I'll kind of show you what I mean. Look at this. If you look all around, you'll see the same exact thing. Corn. More corn. Lots and lots of corn, right? So we started walking through the field just like this and after a while we kept walking and just kept walking and kept walking and all we would see was just corn, lots and lots of corn. And I remember getting kind of scared and thinking to myself, well, are we ever gonna get there? I mean, I just, every time we take a step, it's just more corn. And I'm surrounded by corn. I can't see what's in front of me other than these leaves. I can't see what's behind me other than more leaves and corn cobs. I mean, where are we? What are we doing? Are we gonna are we gonna get there? Are we are we lost? And I was with a friend of mine, and this is really cool because believe it or not, this friend of mine used to go to your school. Okay, he used to go to our school. Uh, he's much older now, but he was an alumni 
from your school and he also went to Boy Scouts and he was a very smart young man and he saw me getting scared and he knew that we were all kind of like walking it seemed like forever and forever and we're like are we ever gonna get there and you know what he did and this is the point of my story boys and girls you know what he did he used his mind he used his brains his smarts his intelligence okay and he thought to himself well I'm gonna look at the time and he looked down at his watch and he saw what time it was and he thought to himself well if it's this time of day it was in the morning he's like the Sun it rises in the east so if I'm going to look at the Sun right now it's in the morning it's early so the Sun is going to be in the eastern part of the sky so I know that the stream is to the east of our homes and if we follow the Sun we'll be able to find that stream without any problems and so what he did is because in a cornfield boys and girls believe it or not while you may not be able to see all around you you can always always look up and right there I'm not gonna shoot the the camera on the Sun because it's not good for our eyes but up there in the east right now because it's the morning there's the Sun and that's what he did we couldn't see anything else but we could look up and we could see the sky you can see the sky can't you we could see the sky and we look to the Sun to give us direction to give us guidance and boys and girls what I want you to see today is that when we get lost in this world sometimes and I mean that uh, not literally I'm not talking about using the Word of God as a map as our GPS device as Google Maps no I'm saying when we get in trouble and we get scared or we need direction or we want to become wise we want to learn about God we need to look to the light the light of this world which is the the Lord Jesus Christ and he has given us direction God has given us instruction and that instruction is found in his word so why is it so important for us to read the Bible well I want to talk about that today I want to talk to you about what the Word of God actually is and what it should mean to us I hope you put your faith and trust in Jesus I hope that you will follow him in believers baptism and I also hope that you will want to learn as much about the Word of God as you can you will see that it is a love letter from God to us for us to read it's not a chore it's not something that we should be uh, unhappy about reading we should be excited about reading the Word of God it gives us guidance it gives us direction it gives us wisdom and it helps us to grow in him and that's what we should want in our hearts so take out your books today take out your Bibles we're gonna be in Psalm 119 take out something to write with a pen or a pencil or a crayon or whatever it is you want to take notes with and follow along with me as we talk a little bit about the Word of God today okay so <laughs> excuse, excuse me oh my goodness all right listen uh, so I'm out of the cornfield now I'm back in uh, the classroom with you guys um, I just want you to open up your ears and prepare to listen all right so Pastor Chris why are you so corny I don't know I just I can't help myself so let's open up with a word of prayer and then I'll look at uh, Psalm 119 beginning in verse number one but let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer let's bow our heads and close our eyes Lord, I thank you for another wonderful week at chapel. Continue to keep us safe while we're here at school. Uh, put a hedge of protection around all the teachers, staff members, and students while they're here. Lord, help us to read a little something from your word that you have given us to encourage us this morning, to help us to grow closer to you, to help us to understand what it is your will uh, for us is and how to be more like you, Lord. That's, uh, that's why you've given us your word, is so that we can grow to be more like our Heavenly Father. And Lord, I thank you so much for loving us, that uh, you have given us an opportunity to uh, not have to figure all of this out on our own, that you've given us the Word of God so that we can see clearly what it is that you would have us to be like and to do uh, every day. And I thank you for that. I thank you for each student here and the teachers. Lord, may you bless them and encourage them today. In Jesus' name, we ask all of these things. Amen. All right, Psalm 119. Look with me at verse number one. It says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. Now remember, iniquity is a fancy way of saying sin, wickedness, evil. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Now precepts are official commands, things that uh, God expects us to do. Uh, 
So he says, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. In other words, without fail and with a lot of effort. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Statutes are also rules, uh, commands, things that uh, God asks us to obey. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. O let me not wander, wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. All right, let's talk about these verses here. Now, Psalm 119 is an amazing book. And it's interesting, it's, it's, it's very, very long. There's a lot of verses in here. And they're broken in up by the Hebrew alphabet. And verse 1 through 8, believe it or not, is the very first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is Aleph. And as we look at verse 9 through 16, it'll be the letter B, which is their Beth. It's like, it's Beth. All right, um, I'm not a Hebrew expert, but uh, I want to talk about the letter A and B today, and I want to look at these verses, and hopefully we'll have a better understanding of how we are supposed to love God through reading His Word. So when we go back and look at verse 1 and 2, there's two, uh, well, two things I really want to show you. Point number one today is this. Point number one, and if you're taking notes, this is, you know, what it's going to look like, all right? So you're going to write down point number one on your paper, and I'm going to tell you what point number one is, and that's this. You know, God wants to teach you. God wants to teach you, and we should listen. We should be listening. So, teachers, if you can kind of help me, maybe write point number one on the board for me to help uh, everyone take notes and to spell words correctly and understand. Um, point number one, God wants to teach you, and we should listen. So, in verse number one and two, the Bible says, these, this, this, it says, blessed are they. And that word blessed, it means to be happy, joyful, to have joy in your heart. And he says, blessed are, are, are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, God uses that word walk to help us to have a visual in our mind. Just like I was walking to the stream, I was on a journey. I was on a destination. I have not arrived yet. I wasn't there where I was going, but I was on a journey. I was walking. And the idea is it's active. I'm actively doing something. And he says, blessed are, are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, for us to understand, what is the law? How do we walk in the law? Well, the law is God's word. It's what God has taught us. It's what he's teaching us. It's his commandments. It's his word to us. And when we walk in it, we are actively learning about it. We are reading it. We are discovering it. We are trying to grow as we read the Bible. So he says here, we will be happy if we are actively looking to learn as much as we can about God. Verse 2, he says, Blessed, happy are those who keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. To be joyful, you know, we've got to listen to God. We have to seek for after him. We have to look for him. And boy, boy, it's not just the listening that's important. It's spending time with God that makes a difference. That's what he wants of us. He wants us to spend time with him. And the best way that you and I can spend time with him is by reading his word, by listening to what it is that he has for us, by listening to his word uh, to grow, to be more like him. And I would illustrate it this way. Way. We like to spend time with our family, don't we? Sure we do. We want to spend time with our friends, with our family members, with people who love and care about us. And God is no different. God likes it. He loves it when we want to spend time with Him. You know, we are what we're trying to be taught here by God is that we are happy 
when we seek God with our whole heart. That's when we're happiest. Listen, when you are forced to do something, when you're made to do something, especially something uh, you really don't want to do, it's not so wonderful. It's not so happy. It's not so joyful. You know, we don't like it when people force us to do things. We get mad and we often talk back and we do the opposite of what it is that we're being forced to do. You know, mom may tell us to clean our rooms, right? Or our teacher may tell you to sit up straight in class or to pay attention. Um, and, you know, if we want to, if mom tells us to clean our rooms and we instead would rather just play on our tablet, we want to play our games or, or, you know, be on social media or whatever on our tablet, you know, we're doing what we want to do instead of being obedient to mom. And of course, mom gets upset. She, you know, gets mad and she warns us. She's like, clean your room. I told you to do that. Or your teacher is like, hey, focus, pay attention, look at me, I'm trying to teach you something here, you know, we will eventually give in and we'll do what mom or our teacher wants us to do, but a lot of times we have a bad attitude, we got a bad heart attitude, we're like, eh, I guess I'll clean my room, but I really don't want to, you know, teacher, I guess I'll pay attention, and you know, we don't want to do that, we're doing it with a bad attitude, why, because our hearts aren't in it, you know, we need to do the opposite, God wants us to enjoy spending time with him. He wants us to look at him like the tablet. You know what I mean? Like we want to actually do those things. He doesn't want us to look at spending time with him as some kind of obligation, something we have to do, something we're forced to do. He wants us to love him and want to spend time with him. You know, when you want to spend time with your family, that's what God wants from us. We are to spend time with God, not because it's a chore, but because it's a joy for us. If you look down at verse number 10, it says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. He's talking to God. Lord, I want to be with you. I've used, I, I just, I can't resist it. I have to be with you. And he says, Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse 16, the author says, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. It's something that you want to do. Instead of being told to clean your room, you just see, hey, my room's dirty. I need to clean it. And you go and you clean it. Why? Because you like to have a clean room. You're happy when your room is clean. You're happy when your, your, your parents are happy with you because you've cleaned your room and it, when they didn't have to tell you 30 times to do it. You're happy to do those things. That's what God wants us to be towards him. Happy and excited and wanting to spend time with him. So again, point number one is that God wants to teach you and we should listen to him. Why? Because when we do listen to God, that's when we are happiest. We should want to learn as much as we can. And how do we learn as much as we can about God? We read his Bible. We read his word. You know, we pray to him and we talk to him, Lord, here is, you know, my need for the day. Here is my request to you. We pray to him and we ask him for the things that we need. And we also pray to him and thank him for the, the things that he has done for us. And we thank him for being our God and our Heavenly Father. And we, are, we show gratitude. We show our thankfulness to him. And then we listen to him by reading his word. And we learn about what it is that he wants us to do by reading his word. You know, when you get uh, into uh, more of your school year, your teachers are gonna ask you to do things. And how do you know what it is that they want you to do? Well, they tell you, and then they give you like a worksheet or they give you an assignment, whether it's through email or through like a, a piece of paper, and you read that and you learn what it is that you're supposed to do. Why? Because your teachers love you and they care about you and they want you to learn what it is that you're supposed to learn while you're in school. This is a time of learning. Well, the Bible tells us that we are to walk. We are to continuously learn. Why? Because God has a lot to teach us and we have a lot to learn and we need to listen. So we need to continuously read our Bibles. When should we read our Bibles? Well, I mean, as much as we feel that we need to. I don't want to just say once a day. I don't want to say twice a day. I want to say as often as, as you can. You should read it because you want to do it. Now, listen, there's going to be times when you're too busy, and that's okay. 
Get back to it tomorrow. Get back to it as soon as you can. Read the Bible as often as you can. Why? Because we are walking. We are growing. We are on our way towards a destination. And that's what we are commanded to do. Point number two. Our next point is this. God wants you to keep his word. Point number two. God wants you to keep his word. Keep, all right? Point number two, God wants you to keep his word. Now, I want to explain something here. That word keep, it means to protect. To protect. Kind of like when you go to the store and your mom buys lunch meat, right? You're probably going to have a lunch meat sandwich for lunch today, hopefully. Something good. And maybe it's like a thing of ham and it comes in those plastic containers and you open up the container and inside that container is another thing of plastic that's holding the meat inside of it and you open that container and why do they do that because they don't want the meat to spoil you don't want to eat rotten meat that's gross you don't want spoiled rotten disgusting meat yeah nobody wants to eat that so you put it in a plastic container to protect it, to keep it from spoiling, to keep it from going bad. So the Bible tells us that we are to keep his word. We are to protect it. Well, what are we supposed to protect it from? We're protecting it from corruption, from being changed, from being altered, from being grossed, like going bad, spoiled. And well, <laughs> Can you illustrate it a better way? Yeah, I can. Let me, let me tell you this. Your teacher is going to give you some instructions today. And they're going to tell you to do some things. And, you know, maybe your teacher is going to tell you, uh, now students, I want everyone to take out a pencil to write with and a piece of paper to write on, right? And so you are listening to that instruction but instead of doing exactly what it is that you've been told, you instead change that instruction. And you say, I'm going to take out, let's see, I've got these really awesome colored pencils, and I'm going to take those out instead of taking out my number two pencil. Are you following the instruction to the letter? No, you're not. You're changing it. You're altering it. Let me give you another example. You have to use the restroom today. Your teacher tells you that it's time to get up, and you're going to go wash your hands, right? So you go to the restroom and you wash your hands. But instead of going in and using soap and water, you just turn on the, the faucet, the spigot, and you just put some water on your hands and you spray it. And you don't even bother drying your hands. You just wipe your hands off on your shirt and you go out in the hallway and your teacher's standing there and she goes, did you wash your hands? And you know what you say? I washed my hands, but you didn't wash your hands. You didn't use soap and water. You just sprinkled a little bit of water on there and you didn't even dry them off. Your hands are just dripping with water and your shirt is now covered with wet spots because you went like this. That is not keeping the word of your teacher. You're not protecting the word. You're disobeying, really. You're just doing what you want to do. You're corrupting the instruction that you've been given. And God says, listen, it's our responsibility to protect or keep the word of God. Verse number four, look with me at what it says. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Now again, precepts are, are, are official orders. Wash your hands after you uh, go to the bathroom. That's an official order. That's something that you always should be doing. <laughs> and you should be diligent about doing it, meaning you should do it every single time. And God says it's our responsibility to keep the word of God, to not twist it to mean something that we want it to mean, not to change it for our own good and purpose, but to do what it says. When it says, thou shalt not lie, well, you know, I can lie sometimes as long as I can, you know, get out of trouble. That's not keeping the Word of God diligently. That's corrupting the Word of God to suit your needs. Uh, thou shalt not steal. Well, you know, they don't need it anymore, so it's okay if I take it. Or they have two. They've got two pencils. It's okay if I steal one. No, 
That's stealing. That is corrupting the Word of God. That's changing it to suit your needs. The Bible says we are to keep it, and we're to do so diligently. So we're always to obey what God tells us to do all the time. Not sometimes, not when it's convenient for us, but all the time. Verse 5 says, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. I, verse 8, I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. This is a warning. This is a warning. If we don't keep it, if we don't protect the word of God, God says, mm, you know what? If you're not going to listen to me, then I'm not going to talk to you. We got to be careful. We got to obey God. We want to continue to hear from him. Verse number 15, it says, I will meditate. I will think upon. I will, I will always remember thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. When you respect someone, when you respect them, you're going to obey them. You're going to do what they tell you to do. If you respect your teachers and they ask you to do something, you're going to do it. But if you don't respect them, you're not going to do it. And boys and girls, I want you to know that we should respect God. We have so much to be thankful for. He has been so good to us. He loved us. He sent His Son to die on the cross for our sins. We should respect Him. We should listen to Him. And we should obey Him. There should be no question about doing those things. So point number two, God wants us to protect, to keep His Word. So point number two is God wants us to keep, protect his word. Point number three, point number three. Uh, I, I want to be careful how I word this, but, you know, God is the one who teaches us. Point number three, God is the one who teaches us his word. Point number three, God is the one who teaches us his word. God is the one who teaches us his word. Now, why am I saying this? Because you're, you're a student, right? You're learning. And sometimes as students, we get scared. We get nervous. We're afraid that we're not going to learn. We're afraid that we're not smart enough. We're afraid that we're not going to understand what the teacher is teaching us. We're afraid that, you know, we're going to need some help. And sometimes we're scared to ask for help because we're maybe too proud or we're afraid of looking bad in front of other people. We're afraid to ask for help sometimes. And I want you to understand that, you know, the Word of God is um, easy for us to understand, but it's very, very deep. There's a lot of good stuff in here, and it's worth learning about. It's worth reading about. But you may be thinking to yourself, Pastor Chris, I've tried to read the Bible before, and I didn't understand something, and it was very confusing, and I didn't know what to do. Well, I want you to see something here in this psalm the author is teaching us that it's God's responsibility, it's his job to teach us about his word and to help us to understand what it means. Now, that being said, I also want you to understand that it's also my responsibility to help you to understand the word and it's your teacher's responsibility and your parents' responsibility to help you understand the word of God. And I want you to remember that it's always okay to come to any one of us and ask us for help. We're on the same side. We're on the same team. We want you to learn just like God wants you to learn. So never, ever, ever, ever be afraid to ask for help. You can always come to us and ask us any questions you may have about the Bible. But my point this morning, point number three is this. We also need to remember to ask God to help us understand his word. The very best teacher is not me, it's not your teacher, and believe it or not, it's not even your parents. The best teacher is God himself. Why? Because he's the one that wrote the love letter to us. He's the one that wrote the Bible. He is the author. He is the one who knows exactly what each word means. And he will teach us if we simply ask him. How do we ask God for things? We pray. We talk to him, just like we're talking right now. And I want you to see verse number uh, six. It says, uh, Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Now he's talking about sinful behavior here, but I also want you to look at it this way. You are not going to be ashamed of asking God for help because God wants you 
to ask him. When he says you have respect, when you go to the author of the book and say, sir, I don't understand what this means, the author is going to gladly look at you and say, I will show you what it means. They're not going to call you foolish or stupid or dumb or anything like that. They're going to, they're going to happily want to help you. Verse 7, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. And it says here, verse 12, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Verse 18, Open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of, it says, thy law, but he's talking about the word of God. Verse 19, I'm a stranger in the earth. In other words, he's saying, I don't understand how the earth works, but you do, God. You created the earth. I don't understand how the sun rises and sets, but you do. You're God. You created the sun. You're the one that set it in the sky and told it to rise and to lower. You understand all of these things. And he says, listen, I'm a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. Verse 26, he says, teach me thy statutes. Verse 27, make me to understand. I want you to understand something right now, boys and girls. God loves you and he wants you to understand his word. If you are having trouble or there's something you don't understand, ask God for help. Ask your teachers for help. Ask me for help. Ask any pastor for help. They will help you. But most importantly, cry out to God just like this author does and say, Lord, teach me your ways. Show me what it is that you would have me to learn. Help me to understand, God. I don't understand. Help me to understand. And he will. And I'll tell you, one of the best ways to get understanding is to continue to read the Bible. It all makes sense. It all works together. It's the word of God. It's his love letter to you. So my question to you this morning is this. Why, why are you not reading it? <laughs> why are you not reading it? It is an awesome book full of awesome truth. Why should you not be, why are you not reading it? If you want to scroll all the way to verse 105. Now I told you there's a lot of verses in here. You're going to recognize this verse too. It says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This is a beautiful picture. This is a picture of someone who is walking, just like we're supposed to be walking, and they're probably in the dark. They probably are having trouble seeing. And so they have a lamp in their hands. And that lamp provides light so that they can see where they're going. And they don't stumble and fall as they walk. That they walk in the right direction, in the right path, just like my friends and I. When we were lost in that cornfield, when we couldn't figure out where we were going, we looked to the light, and the light gave us direction. The light gave us the, the knowledge to know where to go. And boys and girls, you pledge every morning that you're going to make the Word of God a light in your life. And I pray that today you will not only understand what it is to make the Word of God a light in your life, but that you will be obedient to God and that you will actually read the Word, and you will love to read it. You won't do it because I'm telling you to do it. You won't be doing it because, you know, you're afraid that God's going to be mad at you if you don't. You're doing it because you love the Lord. And boys and girls, if you love God today, you need to read His Word. You need to read His love letter to you. He has so much that He wants to teach you, so much that He wants to tell you about. And there's so many amazing things in the Bible. We should read it. It gives us direction. It helps us to walk without stumbling. And remember what it said in verse number 1 and 2? Blessed are they that walk according to the Word of God. We should be happy, and we will be happy, if we are reading the Bible today. Boys and girls, are you reading your Word today? Are you reading His Word, excuse me? Are you reading your Bibles today? I hope you are. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us, and uh, we'll be done for this morning. But let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you want to teach us. I thank you that you give us uh, so much wisdom and instruction, so much good things in your Word. I pray that we would be excited about reading the Word of God. We wouldn't look at it as a chore, but as something we want to do. And I, I pray that if there's someone in here this morning 
who is challenged by this message today, that they want to know more about God, that they are ready to learn, that they're ready to read the Bible, I pray that you would just encourage their heart. Give them joy. Give them peace. You've, you've promised us that we will experience true joy if we seek after you with all of our hearts. And Lord, I pray it will be the desire of every student and teacher who is watching this video to want to seek after you with all of their heart. Lord, I thank you for that. With heads bowed and eyes closed, no one's looking around right now, including myself, I want you to just ask yourself, Pastor Chris, am I seeking after the Lord with all of my heart? And if the answer is no, I want you to maybe change your mind this morning. Based upon what you've heard from the Word of God, I pray that maybe the, the, that you would have a change of heart that you would seek after God with all of your heart this morning. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, I want you to ask yourself another question. Pastor Chris, am I reading the Bible like I should? And if you're here this morning and you, you are feeling maybe a little bit unsettled, uncomfortable, unhappy with the way you've been reading the Bible, maybe you know in your heart that you're not reading it enough, maybe you know in your heart that you have not been seeking after God, I want you to just repent of that right now. I want you to turn away from that. I want you to make a decision in your seats right now that, Pastor Chris, I am going to make it part of my daily routine to read the Bible, to read God's Word, to grow in the Lord. Pastor Chris, that's me. I, I know that I have not been reading the way I should, but I want to today. The, the information that has been given to me has caused a change in my heart, and I want to be obedient to God and I want to read the Bible like I should. Would you just slip up your hand right now and just be a blessing uh, to the Lord and just testify and just allow us to just celebrate this morning. No one's looking around. We're not going to, you know, call on you and embarrass you in any way. But Pastor Chris, that's me. Would you just slip up your hand just signifying that you are experiencing the desire in your heart to change your ways. Yes, thank you for raising your hands. You may put them down now. Lord, I thank you for those who raised their hands those who are willing to make a decision for you today, I pray that they would walk according to your word, that they would keep your word, that they would protect it, that they would do what it is that you say and not try to twist it or change it in any way, but be obedient to the real word of God. And Lord, I pray that we would not give in to the temptations of this world and to do our will, but your will. And I thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us the word of God. And Lord, I pray that we would, before we open up the Bibles every time, that we would simply pray and say, Lord, show me something from the word of God today. Help us to do that so that we can continue to learn about you and grow in you and be more like you every day. I thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things. Amen. All right, teachers, if you'd like to participate in game time, that's coming up next. Uh, if not, uh, have a great week, guys. I'll see you next week. All right, it's game time. If teachers can help me out, we're going to make a, a column for the boys on one side of the whiteboard and a column for girls on the other side. We're going to play boys versus girls like we always do. And uh, I'm going to ask you a question. If you have the right answer, you're going to jump up with the correct answer and you'll get a point. All right. It's very simple. I'm going to have a couple of questions. We're going to start with the girls first. All right. First question is for the girls. We were looking in the book of Psalms today, the book of Psalms today. What chapter were we in? What chapter of the book of Psalms were we in? First one, to jump up when I hit the buzzer gets to guess the correct answer. Hopefully you get it. Ready? Very good. Psalm chapter 119. Psalm chapter 119. Next question is this. I use the word, well the Bible uses the word in verses 1 and 2. It uses the word blessed. Boys, this question is for you. Blessed. What does the word blessed mean? To the best of your ability, what does the word blessed mean? Boys. All right, if you have the correct answer, hopefully you got it. To be happy, to be joyful. To be happy, joyful. All right. Point number one, girls. Here's the question. Point number one. God wants to blank you. God wants to blank you. Ready? First one up gets to play. 
Very good. Very good. God wants to teach you. Now, that was probably easy because if your teacher was being an awesome teacher, they probably had been writing down the three main points on the board. So you probably were able to cheat a little bit right there, girls, and uh, you're welcome, okay? Now, teachers, if you wouldn't mind helping me out, go ahead and erase point one, two, and three from the board because they will be further questions. Boys, I'm going to ask you another question, and yes, I know, it's not fair. Boys, next question is for you. God wants to teach you, and we should blank. We should blank. Point number one, God wants to teach you, and we should blank. First one up gets to play. Very good. We should listen. We should listen. God wants to teach us, and we should be listening to what God wants to teach us. All right, next question is for the girls. Next question is for the girls. We are happiest... Now here's a hard one, okay? To make up for the easy question, here's a hard one. We are happiest when we seek God with our whole blank. We are happiest when we seek God with our whole what? Very good, very good. We are happiest when we seek after God with our whole hearts. Very good, very good. Now, Verse number 16, boys. I will delight myself in what? Verse number 16, I will delight myself in what? This is a hard one. Feel free to use your Bibles to cheat a little bit. I will delight myself in thy correct statutes. Statutes. All right, tough question for the girls. Ready? Tough question for you. What, in your best word, in best words, okay, this is a hard question. What is a statute? What is a statute? I'm going to give you guys a little bit of extra time on this one. It's a hard one. Now, teachers, if the girls don't get it right, feel free to give the boys a chance to steal, all right? If the boys know it. What is a statute? All right, very good. Now, don't forget, teachers, if your students are having trouble or if I'm moving too fast, feel free to always pause me. You can do that, not a problem. A statute is simply a rule or a command uh, given by an authority figure, in this case, God. All right, point number two. It's for the boys. Question is this question is for the boys. Point number two, it says God wants you to blank his word. God wants you to blank his word. What is that word I'm looking for? First one up gets to play. Very good. Point number two, God wants you to keep his word. Girls, next question is for you. What does the word keep mean in the Bible here? What does the word keep mean in the Bible? here. Very good. Very good. It means to protect. To protect. All right. Next question is for the boys. Point number three. Who is responsible for teaching us his word? Who is responsible for teaching us his word? Very good. God is responsible. God is the one who will teach us his word. Very good. That was an easy question. Girls, next question is for you. Next question is for you. If you are struggling understanding the Bible, give me one person that you can go to and ask for help. If you are struggling understanding the Bible, give me one person you can go to for help. Very good. Now, because it's a multi-answer question, I'm going to give the boys a chance to get another one of the answers, all right? Girls, you answered one. Teachers, help me out. Let's not get too confused here. Boys, next question is for you. Who 
else can we go to help for when we're trying to understand the Word of God? Who else can we go to? Very good, very good. All right, this last question, last question. It's going to be both boys and the girls who can win. I don't know who's winning, but somebody's winning. So now it's boys and the girls can answer this question for the last question. All right, so you, I asked you, who can we go to for help? You've given me two answers so far. There were three possible, actually one, two, three, maybe even four. There are other options available. Give me one of the other options. All right, ready? This is for the boys and the girls. This might break a tie. It may not. I don't know, but we're going to find out who the winner is. First one up gets to play both the boys and the girls. Here we go. Who else can we go to for help learning about the Word of God? Very good. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. Good job, guys. So the answers were obviously your pastor, uh, mom and dad, your teacher, and of course the most important is God himself. We pray and ask God to help us learn. All right, so hopefully you got one of those answers correct. Great job today, guys. I look forward to seeing you next week. Remember, read your Bibles, pray, and when you pledge allegiance to the Bible, maybe now you'll actually understand what you're doing a little bit, and hopefully you'll be doing that with your whole heart, just like we should be. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Have a great day.